What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Cold Bloody, and we back with another one. All right, so real fast, let's address the elephant in the room right now, and that is movement, uh, specifically pressure fighting. And this is weird for me to do because I'm not a pressure fighter, but I've done a video on it already, and I still see a lot of complaints about it. In fact, when you hop on the forums, as you see I'm doing right now, you'll notice the largest upvotes on any post are things pertaining to the inability or the uh, the plea to cut off the ring, right? Pressure, fighting, pressure, look at the pressure, boom. Oh, this is crazy. SRR needs to be nerfed, the pressure fighting should be buffed. Looking off the ring. Do you struggle cutting off the ring? Lots of comments. The running away tag it needs to get fixed. It needs to be a penalty for running. Running away is too overpowered. Roused by running. Running away and trapping. I no idea what's going on here. Uh, close fight. I can just literally back away and run the entire fight. It's almost fucking impossible to corner someone and trap them in the well. Yeah. So we're gonna get into that in this video. So I'm in loose movement with Roy Jones. The one thing I see people do really bad, especially when I go into loose movement and start to dance around, I see that they go into loose movement to counter it. As I said in the previous video, loose movement is fast retreat. I consider the base stance as fast approach. So watch, when I get to the center of the ring, or midway through the, when I get near the logo, I'm gonna switch stances and watch how I speed up. Boom. All right. I'll do it again. This way, I'll make it more drastic this time. Loose movement, moving forward, boom. See that? Moving forward, boom. See the speed difference? If you want to catch up to your opponent quickly, get out of loose movement. You have to go into your neutral stance to close the distance faster. And the opposite is shoot here. In order to move back faster, go into loose, you'll speed up. See that speed up, speed up, switch, speed up. Now I'm actually matching Roy's speed here uh, in loose movement as well. But notice what happens when I switch. Look at that, you see that? So I was, I was matching Roy's speed before, but as soon as I go into my base stance, Watch that, boom, he's right on Roy. He's right on Roy, to the point where he had to start walking. Now, some more intricate things we don't think about, in base stance. So you'll notice when I play, you'll if you ever watch my health, you'll notice I go in and out of loose and regular um, movement a lot. It, it's to fix this, so like right now, once you're at a certain distance, it forces you to slow walk, even when you're trying to pull up, pull backwards. So if we both block now, it becomes even more difficult to pull backwards and that's how somebody can potentially glue themselves to you and it's literally like really difficult to separate yourself from somebody when they're doing that I'm trying to use both controllers at once here look at that the only way to get out of that is to stop blocking and go into loose movement i'm nigel ben now you'll see i'll stay in my neutral stance stay in my neutral stance and then once I get to them, boom, I go into loose and start blocking. Because if they're still in loose and they're blocking, it's gonna get us, we're gonna get glued together and I'm gonna be able to get some work off. And then they'd have to chain stances into into that neutral stance to, to break that. But when we're in matching stances, we're glued together. That is very important. That's, all right, so check, check this out guys. I'm doing this online real fast. You see what I have set up right now is the, uh, the angles here um, obviously I started 360 so I said 180 um, we want to keep a straight line at all times right so you see it regardless what stands in as I move they're always going to keep us at, uh, at 180 degrees we're always going to stay on whatever the axis is and we're going to face each other I mean there's going to be a straight line of separation between us every single time now anytime you hold the left trigger however um, you're gonna be slow on the pivot as I explained in another video and when you uh, I wish he would move so I can show you and when you're slower on the pivot It's gonna allow him to tap into that 150 135 degree angle relative to you 210 to 25 things like that 
um, and then it's up to you to get back into that 45 degree angle to, um, to try to cover the difference and, and get back to 180 with him and get the proper line of sight. Anytime you guys are angled at a straight line of each other, that's when you're going to get a speed boost backwards or forward. And so that's why I always stress when somebody is moving laterally, if you are just holding forward and, and trying to roll the left stick to follow them, uh, because the camera moves as well, your relativity is going to be screwed up and you're never really going to be able to um, cut the ring off. So you're better off just stopping entirely, uh, finding a direction you're going to go, and then pushing. And that's what I mean by pinpointing where you're going to go. So this guy's just spamming. I hate when people are trash. So I'm going to see if he follows me here. All right, so right now, 180 degrees, straight line. Okay, he backed up. I right, went to neutral stance, dude. He's 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 not compliant. He, he's a bum. He's 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 a bum. He's not compliant. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna. <laughs> yeah, it. Let's redo this and break this movement down. I would prefer to be a the pressure fighter, but if if yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the sending ring fast. Hopefully, he backs up. Nice. All right. Um, that's just a psychology thing. Usually, when you take the center ring first, um, somebody backs up. So I'm gonna keep stopping continuously, and you notice that I'm holding the left trigger. He's able to get different angles on me. So, right, so he's he's at my 150, then he's at my 210. Right now, he's at 180. All right, so I'm stop, push forward. See the difference in speed? How how fast I close? When he gets that angle on me, right there, push forward. Boom, right there. Change again. Change again. Now I wish he would circle because I, I could show you that he can't actually circle around me. Here we go. Now we're gonna get some in front. And I'm always working my block. Always working my block. And I'm getting full directional control as I try to find the next angle to go. Now, when you play it like this, the only thing you have to work focus on is obviously every fighter has different stat values um, for movement. So, unfortunately, Davey isn't very fast, so I'm not able to catch up to Leonard as fast as I want. So, I have to work a little harder to get things done. But with somebody who's got a faster forward approach, you'll notice immediately that when you just make those stops, look at that, you'll always be able to get onto him and back on him. Now, so I missed the last round, but uh, Leonard is in loose movement and he's just trying to primarily dot box on the outside. So this is good. This is good for us. Um, it's going to allow me to break apart different pieces of the game unless he decides to push me, which I'm hoping he doesn't do this round. So because I do have George Davey, he's got the lowest stats across the board um, in the game, especially the lowest movement stats. Uh, it's gonna and, and Leonard's up there is one of the, the higher movement stats in the game. It's the fastest movement versus... <laughs> The, the slowest movement uh, is going to allow you to see that it, it is possible to, to catch up to him, to cut him off, and, and things like that. Again, it, it is a skill set that is required, but in real life, it is as well. Not every world-class fighter can cut the ring off. We, we, we know this. Okay, he's moving forward a little too much, but I'm getting my blocks in. Now, again, um, this is about keeping my patience, getting my blocks off, making sure I'm defensively responsible, getting that ring cut. Good job. Really got that block off. Jabbing through the guard that time. Looking for an opportunity to put a power punch in just to guarantee I get to do good on the card right there. Just gonna move left here. I'm already on it. We circle, circle back right. I'm already on it. Boom, boom. Yep. That time I just preemptively moved because I knew what he was gonna do. Predictable. I'm gonna circle back. I'm waiting for him to circle back left. So I'm gonna follow him right when he goes right. He's actually not doing it. There it is. And at some point, he did the left right there and bow. Minor steps, minor steps. There it is again. Minor steps, minor steps. Circle back. There it is. Oh. Oh. There we go. He's in my position now. Enough position for me to walk in. Straight line. He's in a straight line. Now I can walk. That's that 180. Let him move. Straight line. That's that 180. Here we go. Power shot. Boom. No, obviously because of my style and uh, I have more of a slow burn approach, this isn't really going to, I guess, suit everybody, but it suits me 
um, I try to just break them down system systematically, um, get my shots where they can, make sure everything's accurate, um, and keep a high percentage, and really get as much blocking in as I can too, because that block stat is really important. Um, the big thing is, uh, because there's an open scoring system, you want to kind of tap into the psychology of it all too, right? So third round, if the guy moving backwards sees he's lost three rounds, he's, he, he might stop pushing forward. Six rounds in, he sees he's lost all six rounds, or he's just down in the cards in general, he's going to be running less um, and starting to commit more. Uh, but that's on you um, to make sure you're defensively responsible and uh, you make sure you're not trying to get him out there in one round. Um, it might be a long night. See, we have Inui on the screen. Um, he's arguably the, the best fighter in the world, pound for pound. And uh, Butler took him to the 11th, um, kept it very defensive, uh, but he stopped a lot. As you see in the clips right here, he stopped a lot. If he just kept moving laterally, who knows? Uh, Inui may have not have gotten a knockout, but he took advantage of those opportunities where Butler stopped moving, and he knew it was going to be a long night. It, and this is the best fighter on the planet, or, or one of the top 10 fighters. Um, in my opinion, he's top three. And it took him 11 rounds to get it done because his opponent just was non-compliant. Uh, it is like that. It is like that. Un unfortunately, it is a video game, so people wanted uh, to get things done a little faster. But when you got guys who are non-compliant, it's going to be a long night. You just got to do your things uh, the right way and try and break them down slowly. All right, so I'm hopping the lag right fast. Show you guys uh, some things here. So let's take it back for a second. So pause that. So one of the key things we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at my man's record right here. Um, real good record. He would think he's got some experience. Um, I always try to plan ahead of time as well, right? So the big thing is when I what I mean when I say plan ahead of time is I look at my opponent, I look at what they have to offer, um, and remember who the character is. So for example, if I'm fighting against a Kell Brook. Um, the likelihood of me, and he's retreating. The likelihood of me trying to press. Uh, like viciously is really slim regardless who I'm using because Kel has bunches and punches so I don't want to give the, the guy an opportunity to sit still and, and get a lot of shots on me uh, in concession with his combos and I also don't want to give him too many counter opportunities because he does have the 10% to his counter punches perk as well same thing with like Crawford if I'm fighting a Crawford player I don't want him an opportunity to get uh, combos off um, if Crawford's retreating, he's probably not going to get too much combos off, so it's, it's to my advantage if he's actually backing up versus if he's pressing and I sit still for a second and he gets off. You, you don't really want to be in the pockets of flurrying with a Terrence Crawford player or even a Kelbrook player or anybody that's got uh, punches and bunches. Um, that's, that's essential. So here we got Usyk. Um, already in my head, I'm like, all right, we got an Usyk player. He's a southpaw. Um, he's got a lot of fights experience he's probably gonna maneuver a lot what can I do to instantly take things away from him I'm already in my head I'm look, preparing for a long night all right so I'm gonna take center ring see what he does immediately I start to see that he's circling um, to my to my outside proper stuff now one thing that I'm gonna point out immediately is y'all have to watch my left hand that's essential right so what I'm gonna do is and you're gonna start to see it is I'm gonna start to lean and I'm going to lean toward uh the screen all right i'm going to lean to my character's left the reason being is i'm sorry i'm going to lean away from the screen actually i'm going to lean um toward my character's right often the reason being is Usyk has a southpaw jab he also has a 20 percent increased damage to his jab with range finder so i don't want to get hit with that jab too often i know the guys are going to use it heavily so if i lean to my right it's always going to pick my left glove up it's essentially my version of a parry so i'm always in the position to stop that jab so i'm going to make sure i do that heavily See that? So his double jab is always getting blocked off the rip. Now another key thing, I'll hit right for a second, you're gonna see me do, I do a lot from a distance. It's kind of hard to do it here. You'll see me, I'll play it through so I can pick a better moment to point it out. Right there I'm rolling, I see it on my right. Go back now you'll see oftentimes a lot of times what I do is I do this right here hold up uh, I'm not really doing it here but a lot of times I go into this little lean right here oops I go into the lean right there um and what I'm doing is I'm taking my hips and I'm pushing them back so 
I'm going to use Canelo as an example. One of the reasons Canelo's defense uh, in real life is so good is because all of his weight is on the front foot when he boxes. By his weight being on the front foot, his head is the uh, the closest thing to the target. And so a lot of guys go head hunting against Canelo, which is also the smallest target that he has. So he's also able to implement some really good head movement. In order to get to Canelo's body, you have to get past his head and past his shoulders to get to his body because everything is forward, his hips are behind him. So from a physics point of view, it's kind of dangerous to get in there with him because you have to get low since he's shorter and then you have to get behind um, behind everything that's in here. So a lot of times, because uppercut is, spamming is real heavy in the game, I use the same psychology. So you'll see me um, in a lot of other clips when you see me play, you'll see me in the center of the ring leaning forward a lot. I'm um, taking my shoulders, I'm putting my shoulders in front, I'm taking my hips, I'm shooting my hips back, and I'm assuming that my opponent will have to get out, will assume that he has to get a lot closer to get his body uppercuts in. At that point, there's an invisible line drawn. So in my head, if he crosses this invisible line, he's probably going to go for body uppercuts. So I'm already preemptively going to block low. And sometimes when he gets to that line, I'll just hold back and go with a straight or a jab. And I'm just preparing myself ahead of time. So real fast, it also helps with head movement too. So think of head movement as you have three uh, stages that you can put your head at. Um, you have the center line, which is uh, the base stance that you're in in your fighter stance. You can move your head back and you can move your head forward. Uh, that's We're just talking about forward and back at, at the moment. So I can move my head forward, I can move my head back. If I move my head forward though and uh, you try to attack it, I can now move it back twice. I can move it to the center and then I can move it to the lean back versus if I'm already in the center I only have the option of leaning back so you're gonna open more counter windows as well if you start to lean forward and then just pull back whenever they go for a jab or a hook or whatever um, it just gives you more room to maneuver out the way Now you can clearly see he's not very comfortable. I'm, I'm able to catch up to him whenever I want to. Um, he, I'm, I'm, I've been blocking everything. Things are not going to go the way he wants them to. And even though it's the first round, he can see it's either going to be a long night or it's going to be a loss. And it didn't take much. He quits. <laughs> it, it didn't take much at all. And this is it, man. This is it. A lot of guys are not here for the long haul. You have to be willing to be here for the long haul when you got a guy who's just running the entire time. And if you show them that you ain't no slouch, um, things will change. Things will most likely change. Peace.